däremot en Birgitta Olsson har skrivit en bok om duktiga flickor. Hon var själv en duktig flicka som liten och tycker att just duktiga flickor ska uppvärderas. Och hon var här tidigare i morse. Intervjun ser du igen klockan fem över halv tio. Och ikväll så hålls Gaygalan på Cirkus i Stockholm och nominerad till årets trans är Erika Andersson som för ett drygt år sedan deltog i programmet Allt för Sverige. Och den förändrade ju hennes relation för Sverige. Ja, för fem år sedan så genomgick Erika en könskorrigering. Hon är professor i psykologi på ett universitet utanför San Francisco och för cirka 20 år sedan stod det klart för henne, och då hette hon Eric, att hon var en kvinna i en mans kropp. I was married many years to the same woman who I loved very much and we had children and I didn't want to throw a wrench in our family life and cause my children to have problems by having uh, a transgender parent. Um, and my wife and I, although we discussed it from time to time, eventually adopted a don't ask, don't tell rule. And um, she had indicated some years before that if I ever decided to transition, she wouldn't stay with me, that she didn't want to be married to a woman and that she couldn't see herself um, being married to, to me as a woman. So those were deterrents for me and kept me closeted for many years. How did your children react? Beautifully, actually. I spoke privately with each of them and told them in a very straightforward way what was going on with me and that I planned to transition. And in each case, the very first thing they said to me was, I love you. And we cried. And it was very emotional. Um, of course, they were troubled by the confusing questions one would have. Um, how did they, they not know this? Um, how did this happen? What did this mean? What was going to happen? And so as best I could, I would a answer their questions as honestly as I could. Um, and then we proceeded from, from there. What was the most difficult challenge you had to overcome? So um, I was worried about um, all aspects of my life after transitioning. Um, and like many transgender people, I have been subject to discrimination in all the areas you would fear, employment, housing, health care, um, public accommodations. So I have firsthand understanding about what it's like for those who are trans in society, in, at least in America. Um, my first and foremost concern was employment, since I'm young enough that I need, still needed to work. And so what I decided to do was to apply to universities in California for a job at a university. That ha that's what I had been doing. And I was successful in securing a good job at a university in the Bay Area. And now you have been nominated to uh, the Transgender Person of the Year. What does this nomination mean to you? Um, having been for many years in the closet as a transgender person and afraid, um, afraid, deeply afraid of how it would be for me in society, it's a rather dramatic turnaround to be recognized as someone who may be admired or respected for what I've done and for how I've done it and um, that it's very meaningful to me um, that, that I could be seen as someone who could teach others or help others. And that's what I try to do. Do you feel comfortable being a woman today? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, unless I tell people, people don't know. Um, I pass easily in society. And I am accepted um, warmly in the company of other women. And I feel like a woman. Uh, I did for years, but just secretly. So will you retire? Are you planning to move to Sweden? I certainly, as a result of being here and being on Alt First Ferry, I, I feel very Swedish. I feel very connected to Sweden and very connected to my Swedish roots. Most of my family is from Dalsland, and that's where I want to have a little place. 
Erik Andersson. Yes. Eh, jo, att, eh, nu ska vi prata om att anta utmaningar som till exempel att cykla långt har blivit eh, oerhört populärt som, och också ett framgångsrikt sätt att eh, samla in pengar till välgörande ändamål. 